Hey everybody, it's Zach from Myshire Farm and our Jumbo Wilds are hatching. Uh, if you haven't watched uh, our playlist, we're doing a playlist on our Jumbo Wild Breeder Program. Uh, so we collected the eggs, uh, we've checked fertility and candled them, we put them into lockdown and now they have hatched. So now we are going to be moving them. And as you can see, we are liking what we see so far. So we'll do one tray at a time. Uh, if I wasn't clear before, uh, we have marked each one of these because uh, we put separate cages in to check. So this is all one cage. Uh, I see no whites and I see no Egyptians, so that's 100% hatching true. Uh, so that's one thing that we want to look at as well. I'm gonna move these out. One, two, three, four. Three, four. <laughs> I'll count the eggs. They were ready to get out. Uh, we do use the blue paper towels in here and not regular paper towels. Uh, underneath the blue paper towels is wire, um, and we will pull that up in about a week and a half to two weeks from now. Um, and they'll be fine on the wire then. Uh, the wire is half inch? Yeah. Yeah, it's half inch. Uh, I think we had tried quarter inch before in the brooders, um, and the uh, droppings just do not go out very well. Um, so half inch works at about a week and a half to two weeks old. that we're going to close this up i'm going to put some cardboard boxes on top obviously we're just using the uh the 250 or 125 125 okay 125 light bulb uh it is getting closer to summer now it's mid-spring uh so for the first week we pretty much cover them up with four boxes uh, and then we'll take some away as time goes on and then by about week two two and a half depending on the weather it's changing every week it snowed two weeks ago <laughs> so it's, it's 80, hard to say um, but i will show you real quick so this one was cage 14. so we're going to move that there obviously these are all cages of jumbo wilds uh, and how we check uh, hatch rate is we'll just separate the eggs real quick as quickly as possible because we probably will have a couple more hatch out tomorrow. That one probably never should have been in. I guess it was fertile, so. Let's see. Looks like we did pretty well so far. That one is, oh, that one's cute. You can kind of see it's hatching out. I gotta get this back in the lockdown. All right, so so far these hatched, these haven't, and we've already seen one hatching out. It's a, not too bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 so 54 hatched, 13 still have it. We are not giving up on the hatch rate just yet. 81% so far. 81% so far, George tells me. Did I lose the lid? Probably set it on the other one. That's fair. Oh, I did. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do that with each one of them. Um, and then we'll start weighing at three weeks old. Uh, we did get a GQ up for our lockdown only. Um, we did that for a couple different reasons. But we do, uh, 
corporate orders and custom hatches and hatches for us and hatches to sell and blah 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 so it's kind of nice to have two separate lockdowns this one looks pretty good too and it looks like it's a hundred percent hatch rate as well uh, again we're just going to be doing this every single time um, and keep moving them around so typically I recommend six quail per square foot in the brooder. Oops. All right, so one, two, three, four, <laughs> two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30, what are you doing? 31, 32, 33, 34. 1, 2. So this one started the pip and died in the egg, unfortunately. 4, 5, 6, 7. Do you not get back in there? Seven, eight, nine, nine. That has not hatched yet. We'll do it again. So again, this is our Jumbo Wild breeding program. Uh, so I'm gonna close this up. Uh, again, we usually recommend six quail per square foot in the brooder, not in the cages. Uh, once they're about three weeks old, we recommend you pretty much cutting that in half, uh, pretty much. I recommend three to three and a half quail per square foot in the cages. Um, but in the brooder, we recommend six quail per square foot would be fine. However, because we're separating all these to weigh them, uh, there's definitely not that many going into each of our cages, or brooders. This is cage 13. So if you remember watching the last video, our fertility rate was around 88% for most of them. Um, and I will show you, there's two more trays to do. I'm gonna show you one more, and I'm gonna show you our research jumbo page uh, that had a 97% fertility rate, if I do remember correctly. And uh, we'll show you this one, and I'll do the last one last without the video, just to not keep boring you. Um, we do recommend that the first few days of uh, them going into the brooder, uh, we definitely recommend uh, food and water very close to the heat source. So again, I'm going to bring the water over. I obviously did not get another one ready. So it's nice to have food on one side, water on the other of the heat source, like so. Uh, we also put food right here uh, because it's close to the heat source. And then after a few days, they're willing to move. The reason we do that is because they're so tiny, they get so cold so quickly that they don't like to move. So if they wanna be right around here with the heat source, they've got food and water that they don't have to come all the way here to. After a few days, they, uh, they do just fine. Uh, and I am very happy to say another 100% hatching true. I like to hear that. Three, four, five, six. Interesting. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 27 out of 32 so far. I like those numbers, especially after the first hatch. We should still have a couple hatch out tomorrow. Uh, so we've got the food and the water close. 
Uh, and then obviously we kind of spread the food out in front of where the feeder is actually going to be the entire time. Uh, we've got the bulb in there and then to make it warm for the first few days until they grow, we put the boxes down. Uh, we do have a couple of feed videos on what we feed, uh, but don't overthink it. Mainly we recommend a very high protein, uh, especially in the brooder process. Uh, somebody on the last live Q&A mentioned that um, they stopped feeding the late or the starter grower feed at six weeks. Uh, we do not. We feed them until they go into the uh, breeder cages, which, depending on what they are, you know, jumbos will, will go in at 10 weeks, so they're going to get starter grower until 10 weeks. Colors are usually around eight weeks. Uh, sometimes nine. It really depends on what's going on for the time. Um, but that's pretty much the process. I've got one more bit, or one more brooder to do, but uh, I pretty much explained all that, how we got the hatch rate, how we got the fertility rate. What we're looking at so far, uh, when we're doing a jumbo, it's very important uh, that we look at hatching true. Um, and we got another 100% hatching true. Um, so uh, it also helps if you're a breeder or if you're going to start selling or things like that, it's very important to listen to customers to hear what they're saying. On the same token, it's also very important that you do your own homework. Um, so, you know, I always say that Jumbo Wilds will hatch about 98 to 99% true. Uh, to give us a little bit of leeway. Uh, obviously, we just did four different cages, four different trays, um, and they all hunt, they all hatched out 100% true, so that's always a plus. Um, but that is what's going on here. Uh, so the way to check your, your hatch rate, which I'm not too worried about it yet, uh, because we should still have about a day or two to hatch, um, is you can either count the birds uh, and how many eggs you put in, or you can count how many eggs you have and how many hatched one way or the other. Uh, your fertility rate and your hatch rate are completely different. Those are two completely different things. Typically fertility re rate means how your, uh, how your quail are actually doing and your hatch rate is pretty much how your incubator is doing. For this, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what it means. So if you've got a very high fertility rate, uh, but your hatch rate is not as good, uh, it's usually an incubator issue. If your fertility is wrong, there could be multiple issues, but that's one thing you'll want to look at. So we'll close these up. I'm not going to close it up fully because I got to get a waterer in there, uh, but that's pretty much what we do. Did I put the nope. So uh, it's going so far so well. We will not be doing any videos uh, for the next three weeks um, because there's really no reason to weigh them that early. Um, but we'll start weighing at three weeks and uh, hopefully you'll watch and enjoy and uh, get some tips and tricks out of it. So until then, thank you very much and we will see you uh, Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live right here on our YouTube channel, My Fire Farm. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody.